Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom, shalom. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. I'm Amaria. I pray that you are holding on to faith, Amuna, and holding on to hope during these times. Thank you for joining me once again for another session of our Sunrise Manna. In today's session of our Sunrise Manna, we have our part two of this little mini series that we began on boasting, bragging, and self promotion. In our last session, we spoke mainly about boasting and bragging as it relates to personality, as it relates to people, and as it relates to those who may be of low self-esteem and or those who are just narcissistic. In today's session, we may touch on a little of that, but mainly we're going to be focusing our attention on the workplace and those ways in which in society we self-promote, whether on social media in our jobs, in our homes, in just general life, the ways in which we promote ourselves. We're putting ourselves out there because somehow or another, we were taught here in Babylon that if you want to get ahead, you've got to do the legwork. You've got to do everything to put yourself out there to be seen by others so that you can be acknowledged and elevated by them. It goes against what the Most High teaches, and we're going to touch on that as well. So thank you for joining me for part two of this very important lesson. I pray you've learned something so far and that you're ready to buckle up and learn some more. So we're going to continue talking about bragging because this has become a really unfortunate and unpleasant part of our society and of our culture. And it has crept its way into the awakening, into churches, into synagogues, into places that are deemed, quote unquote, holy or set apart. We're constantly boasting and bragging about the things that we do and who we are and who we're not and who we know and what we have. It's very unfortunate. It's not Yali. It's not of the Most High. And it's not something that he's pleased with. And so we have to reform ourselves, those of us who have found these qualities, these characteristics, having a home in us. We have learned and we have been conditioned by the world to be self-promoters, especially in the workplace. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Before we do that, we're going to talk about culture. Culture in and of itself is comprised of artifacts, norms, values, rituals, and stories but also inserted into the culture is self-promotion as a means to success. So we have artifacts. We have things that tell a story. For example, the Liberty Bell. People see that as an artifact or an icon that means something about the history of this country, the United States. We have norms or normal patterns of behavior within a society. You have the values of the society. For example, people know that it's not right to walk up to somebody and smack them across the face for no good reason. That's one of our values. We know that it's not good to lie. It's not good to steal. Okay. We have rituals. Some people have rituals of going to church still. Some people have rituals of going to synagogue and so on and so forth. Heroes. People have heroes in the Bible, in the scriptures, or perhaps they have heroes in their own life. Maybe it's their mother or their father or some other person that they know that's become their hero or maybe Somebody on social media has become their hero. And we have stories, the stories we tell repeatedly within our own families and within the culture that make up our cultural identity. But what has inserted itself into the culture and the cultural identity of those not only in America, but in the world, is this idea of self-promotion as a means to success. That if you want to be successful, you have to promote yourself to kingdom come because everybody's got to know what you can do and what you have done. And that's the only way you're going to be successful. That's the belief. And that's how people operate. And it has become a cancer that has been inserted into society where relationships are not meaningful. They're not as meaningful as they once were because you never know whether or not someone is in your life or pursuing a relationship with you because they want you or they want what you can offer them. We're going to look up this word self-promotion and it is defined as the act or habit 
of trying to make other people pay attention to you and think that you are interesting, important, successful, etc. It is shameless self-promotion. I have such a good opinion of him that I'll forgive his shameless self-promotion. And another sentence, this debate is less about principles than about self-promotion. So to self-promote is to put yourself out there and have no shame about telling people all that you can do. And perhaps in a business setting, you're being told this is what you have to do in order to get ahead. You have to do this to get ahead. In LinkedIn, many of you are familiar with LinkedIn. It's a business social media site. And I found this article on LinkedIn that talks about the art of self-promotion in different cultures and what we can learn from those who do it well. There is now an art to self-promotion. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. So we'll now read this article written by Soraya Atmani. And it reads, I would give myself an A+. Is that enough? Can I go higher than that? That is a perfect example of the culture of self-promotion in which we live in the United States and in the world. It goes on to say, It comes as no surprise that the person who spoke those words was none other than Donald Trump when asked to rate his presidency. If there was such a thing as a braggart ranking, the U.S. president would be <laughs> in a close tie with Kanye West, who declared himself to be Get this, brothers and sisters, the number one most impactful artist of his generation and Shakespeare in the flesh. Brag much? Continuing, regardless of the merits or otherwise of their work, people like Donald Trump and Kanye can teach us a thing or two about how to promote ourselves. Now, you know that we are in a sad situation when we're looking to these two individuals to teach us a thing or two about ourselves. Let's continue on. In general, it's no surprise to anyone that people who rate themselves the highest are usually those with the most questionable impact. And history is not short of examples of high-powered figures with a serious case of the Dunning-Kruger effect. But what about positive self-assessment? that's well-earned and well-deserved? And why are some people primed to be modest about their achievements when others are able to show off effortlessly, even if undeservedly? So what is the Dunning-Kruger effect that this article refers to? According to Psychology Today, the Dunning-Kruger effect is a cognitive bias in which people wrongly overestimate their knowledge or ability in a specific area. This tends to occur because a lack of self-awareness prevents them from accurately assessing their own skills. Long story short, these people tend to overestimate what they can do, who they are, where they've been, and their general accomplishments and their skill set. It's the person who says, oh, I can do that. Whatever you mention, oh, I know how to do that. I can do that, when they really can't. Or maybe they think they can, but they can't. So this is the Dunning-Kruger effect. We're going to continue on on Indeed.com, and this is a career site. There's yet another article here on self-promotion and what we can learn from self-promotion. What is self-promotion? Self-promotion is the process of networking and presenting yourself to the public in order to achieve a professional goal. Essentially, Promoting yourself means presenting yourself to others as an accomplished, capable, and skilled professional in your field of expertise. This is a learned skill that can promote your growing career in the future. Depending on your specific goals, you can incorporate a range of self-promotion techniques that can help you develop your career. So, according to this article, you should self-promote to get ahead. Is that how the Father wants us to operate? I think not. But let's see what they're telling us that we need to do. Why is self-promotion important? Self-promotion is crucial for gaining employers' attention, expanding your professional networks, 
and even securing professional recommendations. Whether you're building your own business, seeking a new job, or working towards advancement, self-promotion can be a powerful tool for achieving successful results in your career. Additionally, self-promotion can help others notice your strengths and qualifications, boosting your marketability and further establishing your professional reputation. Tips for self-promotion in the workplace. So according to this article, these are activities and behaviors that are encouraged in the workplace and they are centered around self-promotion. Number one, share your accomplishments. Rather than waiting for formal praise, take advantage of your company's resources to self-promote a recent endeavor that led to success. Consider sharing your accomplishments in a monthly newsletter, company-wide email, or meeting. For example, sharing a project that you're working on in your company's monthly email is a great opportunity to present your efforts to your colleagues and supervisors. Imagine sharing something that you've done in an email company-wide. Imagine boasting anyone. Continuing. Number two, promote your expertise outside of work. It's helpful to make your skills and accomplishments known outside of your workplace as well. Consider using a social media account to share your recent marketing strategies or speak about your professional expertise. For instance, writing informational blog articles or sharing tips about success are two ways you can promote your expertise outside of the workplace. So this article is encouraging boasting and bragging about your accomplishments company-wide in an email or a newsletter, but also on social media. Talking it up, talking yourself up, making people know that you are all that. Number three, advocate for your contributions. It's important to remember that self-promotion also includes how your contributions add to your organization's success. Consider letting supervisors know when you finish important projects or take on additional urgent tasks to ensure they understand your motivation for helping your organization achieve business goals. Oh my gosh, can you imagine every time you take on a new project, you go to your supervisor and you say, I just got done with my project. I'm taking on a new one. Just want to make you aware. Are you watching? Do you see me? I'm really good. I'm busy. Exceptional work reflects positively on both you and your manager and can demonstrate how you apply effective communication to keep everyone updated on your progress toward achieving company goals. The interesting thing here is that there is a need to keep everyone updated on your progress toward achieving company goals. You would think perhaps just your immediate supervisor, maybe their supervisor, but everybody, does everybody need to know? Continuing, number four, promote positive feedback from performance reviews. A performance review can be an excellent time to reflect with your manager on your successes. After the performance review, you can confidently use the feedback from your manager to promote the strengths and skills discussed to other senior management and colleagues within your network. Supervisors may take notice of the specific accomplishments given to you by your manager and see these strengths as valuable enough to offer you a promotion within the company. Oh my word, I can't even imagine. So you are sitting for a performance review from your manager and your manager says something positive about you, about your work ethic, about your work habits or what have you. So then you take those words and you go to an even higher supervisor and let them know about what your manager said. This, this just seems unheard of to me, but this is what's being promoted here. This is what's being advised. Let's continue on. Number five, provide support to colleagues and peers. Helping others can be another effective way to use self-promotion. Oh my goodness, helping other people to promote yourself. If you finish work early, 
you can let your manager know that you're done and available to help others. Oh my goodness. By offering support after completing your work, you demonstrate your proficiency at accomplishing important job tasks. And you also have the opportunity to assist coworkers with your unique knowledge and skills. For example, if you have unique processes for working with spreadsheets, offer to help coworkers develop their proficiency too. Not because you're a good person, not because you're kind-hearted, but because you want to use this as a way to self-promote. Okay, this is what this article is teaching. Let's continue on. It says, similarly, if you find yourself with spare time, talk with people who work in other departments. You may find that they need help with something that you're skilled at, and this is the perfect time to show those skills to others. They'll be grateful for the help, and they could use you as a resource for their department in the future. Okay, helping for gain. Number six. Discuss your positive feedback with your manager. If you get good feedback from a colleague, forward it to your manager so they see how others recognize the effort you make at work. Consider adding a comment of your own before sending your email such as, I'm sending along because some of my coworkers' feedback relates to the feedback you gave during my performance review. Communicating the positive feedback you get from teammates can help show your employer your motivation to succeed and contribute to your organization. Oh, this would be so annoying if I had somebody working with me who was constantly pointing out the things that they were doing. Look, I came in early and I made coffee for everyone. Can you note that on my performance review, please? Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Let's continue. Number seven. Compliment your co-workers' achievements. Share with others how a colleague's support on a project assisted you in completing it successfully. It highlights your ability to share praise. And when the colleague you're complimenting finds out you said positive things about them, they're more likely to do the same for you in the future. Sharing credit also shows that you enjoy collaborating with others, which is a desirable skill for many employers. Once again, they're insinuating that you should compliment others because you want them to compliment you. Number eight, keep your portfolio up to date. Consider keeping a portfolio of your work on social media or a personal website for other professionals to review. Be sure to update your portfolio regularly so your social media and professional networks can see your most recent accomplishments. Additionally, showcasing your portfolio across multiple social media platforms can help you reach more professionals and add to your network, resulting in future achievements, recommendations, and other opportunities. Wow, this article is really advocating for putting yourself out there. It's all about you all the time. Number nine. Identifying which of your skills are most useful in your role can help ensure that you focus on developing this skill. It can also remind you which skills you may want to mention in performance reviews and other feedback opportunities. For example, if you know that communication is an essential skill for your role, you can mention in your self-evaluations that you're managing multiple communication channels and initiating contact with others when necessary. Okay, let's continue. And finally, number 10, find additional opportunities to promote yourself. As if you haven't promoted yourself already, find additional opportunities to promote yourself. A great time to casually mention something that you recently did well in the workplace is when your supervisor tells you, Good morning and ask how you're doing. Oh, my word. Family, really. Your supervisor says, good morning. How are you doing? So what you're going to do now is you're going to tell them, oh, by the way, you know that project that we worked on last month? I did really well at that. He just asked you how you were doing. Be a human being. 
Continuing, this is a no pressure situation where you can tell him how wonderfully work is going and segue into a small success you recently achieved. This leaves them thinking positively about you at the end of the conversation. Or maybe they think that you are a jerk because everything is all about you. You're only looking for opportunities to promote yourself to get ahead. So this article is demonstrating a major problem within our world right now. And it has crept into so many different facets of life. Even our children are seeking to self-promote. Even children are on social media wanting to say, well, I'm good at this, I'm good at that. But you would think that that would be something that children would do because they're children. They haven't learned not to do that. So we have children doing it. We have adults doing it. We have the elderly doing it. We have presidents doing it. We have world leaders doing it. We have people in the backwoods on farms with social media sites doing it. So this is a problem. This is a big problem because the father did not intend for us to become like the world. He never intended for us to hang our hat on that peg, that peg of self-promotion. But so many people do it. So many people are all about the views and the likes and the follows and the money that comes from that and the, and the gain that comes from that and whatever else it is that the public appreciates about you, likes about you, so that it can make you feel good about yourself. And so you glory in their approval. You glory in those likes. You boast in that. And that is not what the Father intended for us. He intended for us to boast only in Him. And that if we do not faint, He would lift us up. He would raise us up. He would promote us. Not we trying to promote ourselves. That was not His plan. So now we're going to go to Scripture. And we're going to read what the Father desires for us with regard to promoting ourselves, or the lack thereof. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8, we read, Let the same mind be in you that was in Yahushua Hamashiach, who, though he was in the form of Yahuwah, did not regard equality with Yahuwah as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave or a servant, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a stake. Hallelujah. This is our example, brothers and sisters. Yahushua Hamashiach is our example. He who knew no sin, he who lived in the very bosom of the Father, came to the earth, divested himself of his divinity, and became a humble servant. He did not exploit himself in the least. He didn't say, hey, Father, look at what I did. Look, look, I healed that person. Did you see that, Father? Did you see? Can I have a raise? Can I have a promotion? He didn't do those things. When the Father said, this is my son, in whom I am well pleased, he didn't say, hey, the Father's pleased with me. Can you add that to my performance review? He didn't do those things. And we are to follow after his example and not the example of the world. James chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that you, show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, Do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For there, for where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. Oh, our brother James Yaakub could not have said it any clearer. This selfishness, this boastfulness, this self-promotion does not come from above. It comes from the wicked one. It is earthly, unspiritual, 
and devilish. And where it is present, this self-promotion, this me, 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 there is wickedness, chaos, disorder of every kind. Continuing. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. This wisdom from above is pure and peaceable. It doesn't promote itself. It doesn't say, look at me, look at me. It doesn't focus on its performance review for the purpose of getting a raise. It serves because it loves the Father, and it wants to make the Father look good, not itself, himself, herself. This should be our aim. This should be our goal. The Father's pleasure, not our promotion. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9 and 10. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle. This is, of course, the apostle Shaul, or Paul speaking. Because I persecuted the congregation of Yahuwah, but by the grace, the Han of Yahuwah, I am what I am. And his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of Yahuwah that is with me. Hallelujah. Now you see what the Apostle Shaul did there. Right there, that could have been seen as a boast in himself. He said, I worked harder than anybody. Because I persecuted the congregation of Yahuwah, I felt that I needed to labor and I worked harder than any of the other disciples. At first, that sounds like a boast. But then he checks himself. Here's his check. He said, but not I. It wasn't me. It was the grace of Yahuwah that was with me. He did the work. Hallelujah. That is the proper approach before the Father. When you recognize something happening in your life that's really good, you have to stop and say, wait a minute. Who is the real source of this? Where is this coming from? Am I the source of it or is it the most high? And then we've got to give credit where credit is due. All praises to the most high Yahuwah. All praises. Continuing. In Proverbs or Mashli chapter 25 verse 14. Like clouds and wind without rain is a man who boasts of his gifts falsely. So the man who boasts of the things that he does and the abilities that he has is like clouds and wind without rain. What is a cloud? What is wind without rain? It blusters. It has no substance. Continuing, Proverbs chapter 26, verse 12. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. So the lesson is, do not be wise in your own eyes. Don't praise yourself. Let other people do that. And Mashley, chapter 27, verses 1 and 2. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Let another praise you, and not your own mouth. A stranger, and not your own lips. Oh, hallelujah, the scripture is so clear about this, that this culture of self-promotion and boasting that we find ourselves in is not of the Most High. It is earthly, it is sensual, it is devilish. It is not from above. It is not from the Father. Continuing. James, Yaakub, chapter 4, verse 16. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Boasting is evil. Plain and simple. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. Thus saith Yahuwah, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him who boast, boast in this, 
that he understands and knows me, that I am Yahuwah, who exercises loving devotion, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For I delight in these things, declares Yahuwah. He who boasts, let him boast in Yahuwah. Let him boast in the fact that he knows the Most High. That is what we are to boast in, not in our accomplishments in this earth. Continuing, 2 Timothy chapter 3. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of Yahuwah, having the appearance of godliness or yaliness, but denying its power, avoid such people. And there we have our instructions. If there are people around you who are engaging in these self-promoting ways, who are all about themselves, all about what they've done, what they can do, what they want to do, you have to avoid these people. Scripture says, avoid such people. People who are lovers of self, lovers of money, disobedient, unappeasable, those who are without self-control. This is the instruction, and this is what we must do. Continuing. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. For who sees anything different in you? And what do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? How can we boast in anything? Everything that we have has been given to us by the Most High. How can we boast in anything as if we are the source of it? We're not. Maybe those in the world don't understand that they're not the source of anything. So they boast. But we, we should know better. We should know that we are not the source. And that the person to brag on is Ab Yahuwah. Tehillim, chapter 94, verse 4. They pour out their arrogant words. All the evildoers boast. And that's what they do. They boast. But the Father will have the last word. He will. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. For by grace, Han, you have been saved through faith. This is not your doing. It is the gift of Yahuwah, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. We cannot boast in the salvation that's been granted to us because it was a gift from the Most High Yahuwah. And indeed, everything he gives us is a gift. And what we do with it is our gift back to him. So we are not to boast in the things that we have and the things that we've done. We are to boast only in the Most High Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Our final verse of scripture today comes from Galatians chapter 6. And it reads, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Mashiach. For if a man thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Be not deceived, Yahuwah is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that also, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Ruach 
shall of the Ruach reap everlasting life. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. But Yahuwah forbid that I should glory or boast, save in the stake of our Ardun, Yahushua HaMashiach, but whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. The Apostle Shaul here paints this beautiful picture of himself for us, as being set apart from the world, turned away, set apart for the Master's use. And that is what the Master desires for us, to be set apart for his use so that he can glorify the Father through our actions. Hallelujah. In the previous page we read that we are not to become weary in well-doing. So if we're doing what we're supposed to do, if we're not self-promoting, if we're not telling our bosses all the good things that we do, if we're not telling everything that we got, everything that we did, every trip that we took, taking copious pictures of our children and smattering them on social media. If we're not doing these things, what are we to do? We're to do what Galatians 6, 9 says. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. So what is this well-doing that we are to not become weary in? Following after Torah, following after what the Father said, and doing what he tells us to do. Let us not be weary in that kind of well-doing. And in due season, we will reap if we do not faint. Halal Yahuwah. Let's pray, brothers and sisters. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that you've allowed us to have together. We thank you so much for showing us what your expectations are for us in this current culture. There's so many things that are happening around us. And sometimes it can be a little daunting as we find ourselves sometimes caught up in things that we never intended to become caught up in. I pray, Father, that you would forgive us, that you would cleanse us, that you would help us to stay on the straight and narrow path to life, that you would help us to walk by Amunah and not by sight that you would help us to not brag or boast or self-promote for any reason, whether we're feeling insecure or whether we just want to lord it over someone. Please, Father, prevent us from boasting and bragging and stealing your glory. For to boast in the self is to steal Abba's glory, Abba's kabad, because he alone is worthy. He is the Most High. To worship anything else but the Most High is to worship falsely. Forgive us. Forgive us for worshiping falsely. Forgive us for hitching our, our sights to the next person down the street who has gotten the likes and the views and we think that they're all that and we want to follow after them and follow in their footsteps. Forgive us. Forgive us, Father. Let the work that you do in and through us, let it speak. And may we remain silent, giving only praise and honor and ahab to you and to Yahusha, our kinsman, redeemer, and avenger. Father, help us to be all that you desire for us to be. Help us to walk worthy of the calling that you have placed upon us. Oh, Father, help us to be that remnant seed of Yasharal, who would be chosen to do the greater works. Oh, Father, I pray, make it so. Make it so, dear Father. Make it so. All of these baraka, I pray and humbly ask in Yahushua's name, Aman and Aman. Well, brothers and sisters, I just want to thank you for once again joining me on the channel for another session of our Sunrise Manna and our topic, bragging and self-promotion. May it not be named even once among any of us who profess Mashiach and who cling and cleave to him 
as he is taking us to the Father. May it not be named among us. May we not do it. May we not engage in it. And I know there might be some of you who feel insecure and feel a need to talk or explain things about yourself so that you can feel good about yourself. Well, the Father is the cure for everything that ails you. And he's able to heal your heart. He's able to bring that balm and apply it so that you don't have to do that anymore. Just ask him. Ask him to intervene and to show you the better way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that the Most High Yahuwah would Baruch bless and keep you, brothers and sisters, and that he would make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. I pray that he would lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom and shalom. Peace. Peace in every area. Nothing missing, nothing broken. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to come before you on this yom. Thank you. We give you thanks and praise. And when we boast, we boast only in you and never in ourselves. Halal Yahuwah. Shalom and shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom and shalom.